renovating a vintage horizontal twin-cylinder model steam engine. The finishing off. Before starting this part of the job, I gave it a great deal of thought. What I'm doing is plugging the old holes that are in the steam chest, mainly because they're drilled out of alignment. I was going to just fit a simple flange silver soldered to a pipe. The steam inlet union on top of both of the steam chests is a very visible part. So I thought what I'll do is plug up the existing holes, file them flat and make a special flange. I could have re-drilled them but it's risking it a bit because it would have meant taking the thing apart again and I didn't think it was necessary. Here I'm breaking off the brass bolts after they've been loctited in position with Loctite 603. And then initially, using a drum sander, I cut them down a little bit and the rest of it is handwork. This is a flat needle file and I'm using it to flatten off the surface. You have to be very careful and it's quite tedious work. But after much filing and sanding later, I eventually end up with a nice flat surface that I can successfully mount a flat flange to. Here you can see the general arrangement. For this I'm just using a commercial fitting, but in reality I will have to make a fitting that is quarter 40 at one end and 5 16 by 32 threads per inch at the other end. This is the commercial fitting screwed in place just to hold the flange so I can have a look what it's going to look like. Scale is very important. Originally I was going to use a quarter inch pipe for the inlet, but it looked far too clumsy when I offered it up to the engine. You can see here by using a 3 8 by 32 nut and the quarter inch pipe how big and bulky it does actually look. It's okay for the exhaust, but not for the inlet. Instead I'm going to use 3 16 diameter copper pipe, and this will be much better, much more in keeping with the scale of the engine. These are the fittings I'm going to use, the two flanges you've seen. These are the special adapter fittings, quarter 40 to 5 16 by 32, and these are how they're going to fit together to go onto the engine. With the copper pipe held loosely in place, it looks okay, but there's something wrong. The edges of the flanges are far too clumsy. So what I did was profile them, as you see here. This profiling was originally carried out on a linisher or belt sander, and then finished off with ever-decreasing grades of wet or dry sandpaper, followed by a quick polish. And over time, as these parts tarnish and blend more into the steam chest, I'm sure they will look fine. And here is the 3 16 piping that I use. It's standard copper brake pipe. Plenty strong enough for the job. I'm going to fit a commercial T-piece in between these two pieces of pipe. And here I'm marking the positions to cut the pipe so that the T-piece sits in the middle. Once all the piping is silver soldered together, it should look something like this. I'm removing the centre union for the time being to fit my compressor inlet pipe. And when I connect up the compressor, something should happen. And it does, as soon as I open the air valve, off the engine goes. The initial run is not bad. It's running okay, really. It's galloping a little bit. It's going diddle da diddle da diddle da which is not quite the right sound. It's not even enough. So what I need to do is adjust the position of the eccentrics on the crankshaft until both of the cylinders work in harmony with each other. I showed this in the previous video, but the adjustments now are much more sensitive. You need to move the eccentrics an extremely small amount, and you will know when it's right the engine takes on a different tone. All of the beats may not be the same volume as each other, but they should be as even as possible, and it does really take quite a long time. This has speeded up me getting into anal tweaking mode, if there is such a thing. I like to make sure it's right and you have to try different positions. Then suddenly you find the right one and the whole thing runs in harmony. Then you think, I'll try and get it better. And it goes sadly wrong. And you repeat the process. What you do need for this job is a great deal of patience. Just keep repeating the process until you get the thing to run like a steam engine like a steam locomotive. This is sounding quite good now, so I think I'll leave it at that. The next thing to do is to paint the cylinder cover, but before I go into that, I'm just going to mention about the flywheels. Throughout this rebuild, I've been talking about the lack of concentricity in the flywheel department. This is due to the flywheels not being 100%, the centre bosses of the flywheels not being 100%, and the crankshaft being slightly bent at both sides. Now I can put this right or improve upon it, 
but I daren't show it on the video. Suffice to say, I will be using a dial test indicator and a large block of mahogany. Here you see the engine with the cylinder cover painted and refitted, and it's looking rather good, I think. All I've got to say now is thanks for watching the series, and I hope you found it useful.